Hello everyone, it's Matt here at Fintelix, the Operations Manager. Yo, this is Will. How's it going everyone? And today what we're going to discuss is we're going to discuss the importance of high availability and disaster recovery. So a lot of you are probably wondering, what is high availability? High availability really comes down to how well a system will respond to external factors uh, such as natural disaster. Let's say there is a earthquake that happened around your data center or there is a fire that's on your data center that's right your data center is on fire how will your system respond to that so for a well architected highly available system the business would carry on its business activity as usual without any hiccups this is also known as business continuity so how is this better than what's already in place well, that's a very interesting question. Um, what do you mean? Well, there's a lot of solutions people could choose from. They could probably host their own database off of premises somewhere else on their own. They could right. probably ho host within their on their own premises. Right. So there are four different design patterns that are commonly used as the best practice. There is the backup and restore, which basically means you don't start any servers, you don't have anything that remotely resembles a production system, but instead you have all the information or the required pieces that allows you to restore a backed up production system. Okay. And this is known as backup and restore, right? Mm -hmm. uh, needless to say, it takes a lot of time for you to restore, recover all of the information. You may take snapshot of your database, for instance, and store it elsewhere. And in case of a disaster, you simply use that backup snapshot to restore your database. The second approach is known as pilot lab, which is something that's a bit more different. You have all cached content. You have a system that is more ready to be restored. Um, there is, There may even be a miniature version of a full-on production system in the recovery site. And usually, uh, cloud computing provider, cloud, cloud providers tend to give you geographic distinct locations uh, for different data centers. I know Amazon does this in multiple regions and each region has multiple availability zones. Uh, Google has multiple regions are spreading around the world as well. I'm sure Azure does as well. And they all each have distinct geographic availability zones. And for pallet light, it usually comes down to whether or not you can restore the system. And for pallet light, usually you have a miniature version of the system that's in a distinct geographic location. And there's also worm standby, which is a different design pattern on its own. It's like a miniature version of a production system, which is, which allows you to scale up much quicker because it's technically already functional and you're able to scale up very quickly. And there's also multi-site, which is needless to say a bit more expensive, but makes your system more available. Is warm standby always available? Like if, if someone has to scale up very quickly, will that automatically kick in or would they have to customize that? Well, you have to do some type of maneuver upon switching from like, uh, say, one geographic region to another, there is some type of, type of signaling that will happen, whether it's by serverless function or um, it's via an event that's being triggered. And it will essentially notify the system that a backup system is being used. And usually with auto scaling design in mind, it will automatically scale up in a very quick time notice. So that's something, if you were managing your own database, that's something you wouldn't be able to account for. That's right. That, I, I would definitely imagine that you wouldn't be able to do that. That's actually a lot of companies doing nowadays. Is they have on-premise data center and on-premise systems that they host on their own, and they just want an option to, to, for disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. That's when they build what's called a hybrid cloud solution where they host part of their system on cloud providers. And that way, in case of a disaster, they quickly switch to their cloud provider, mm -hmm. right? 
That makes sense. So they get to utilize both. Right. Correct. So they get to leverage their internal hardware engineer uh, who understand how to maintain infrastructure, and at the same time, they get to use the highly available design for their cloud computing based on their cloud provider. So I'm just wondering, right. how do you choose between these different design patterns? Well, Matthew, that's a very interesting question. As you can see, um, these different design patterns, they all work, but it's a matter of response time, right? If you do the multi-site disaster recovery design pattern, obviously it's gonna take less time than say backup and restore. So it really comes down to cost, right? You always have this system in case when something unexpected happen, right? It's just sitting there. But when it doesn't happen, it's gonna cost you money, right? So it comes down to the question of whether or not it's worth it for you to spend that much more money for insurance purposes, right? For risk mitigation. It comes down to how big is your potential loss when bad incident happen, when your system need to be available, but it's not, right? If it's a critical piece of your business, then yeah, you probably should spend more money and have a multi-site recovery. Or let's say if your system is not as important, if it is down a couple hours, it wouldn't hurt, then maybe you should consider, you know, backup and restore. Or maybe it's somewhere in the middle, right? If your business can, can be down for like five, 10 minutes, you should consider warm standby and etc. right? I'm just wondering, are there any examples that you can think of just off the top of your head? This is just another question of companies that are actually known to be using this right now. Right, so Netflix is a great example of that. Netflix had an outage and uh, it was availability zone outage. Before that, Netflix didn't pay attention to design a highly available system. After that, everyone just started to realize, oh, we need to pay attention to this. And uh, it was the case where there was a availability zone outage, I believe, uh, at the time when Netflix was using Amazon Web Service, AWS Cloud. And uh, after that, people begin to start this high availability design approach. Uh, so right now, a lot of big enterprise have multi-region deployment. There haven't been that many occasions where there's a regional outage, like multiple availability zones are down and you have to switch to a different region. But it's more for compliance and in case if something goes really wrong. And happens. over redundancy. Right, right. So there you have it. This is why high availability and disaster recovery are something that you should be considering. And also we went over some of the design patterns that people use that's commonly practiced in the industry, such as backup and restore, warm standby, pilot light, and also multi-site deployment. Let us know if you have any questions or concerns, hopes, dreams, fears. Yeah, and leave it in the comment if you want us to talk about certain topics in more, a bit more in details. If you leave a comment down below, you actually have the opportunity to win one of our Fintelix t-shirts. Yeah, that's pretty cool, I think. I think so too.